Hello everyone, welcome back to this course. In this entire course, we are going to discuss about the EJP. So what is EJP and why do we need them and what is the advantage of using an EJP? Not only that, we are going to talk about what is JPA and how the EJP is working along with JPA and then we'll talk about uh, some important database queries and how to configure an application server. It can be a WebLogic server or it can be a JBoss server. For uh, this course perspective, we are going to use a WebLogic server. So what are we going to cover here? We are going to talk about how you can use a Eclipse and how you can configure your WebLogic server to your Eclipse IDE. So the reason you don't have to go back to a WebLogic server and do the manual deployment. So we can directly deploy your EAR application, which is an EJP application from your Eclipse to a WebLogic a server. Hello everyone, welcome back. So what is the first thing which you're going to discuss today? So first we need to understand what is an EJP. Okay, so EJP stands for Enterprise Java Bean. And what is the purpose of it? Why can't we do uh, something else like uh, Spring Boot and Hibernate? Everything purpose, similar kind of approach, right? But what is the advantage of using the EJP? So basically, whenever you are trying to use an EJP, it's an architectural for building a highly scalable and strong enterprise level application. You can simply say you can develop an end-to-end -end application with the EJP, which means you can have the client and communication and you have the interaction with the database and you will get the request and you will process the request based on the input and we have a, a load balancer so the container will take care of the load balancer how we can serve a multiple request and not only that it can be deployed on java w application servers like weblogic jbus and we have a lot of different servers available in the market and for this tutorial, uh, we're going to use a web logic and we're going to discuss a lot of uh, new things about G EJP 3.0. Okay, so we're not going to talk about a a EJP 2.0 anymore because we have 3.0, which contains a lot of new functionalities and annotations. To be a simple, EJP 3.0 makes development easy when it's compared to EJP 2.0 so before we start the course what are the important prerequisite which is required for each and every one of you so you all need just a basic programming knowledge in java and you need to know about any IDE. it doesn't matter which id you are using for this course purpose we are going to use eclipse you can use eclipse or you can use netbeans or you can use intellij the IDE preference is up to you and if you have a basic understanding about uh, some other technologies like a database and application servers it will be good but even if you don't don't worry about that we will have a simple or a simple discussion about how we can use the database and how the application server is working and how we can configure the application servers so we'll spend some time over there and then we'll move on to our application development Hello everyone, welcome back. So as part of this course, what are we going to cover? So that's important, right? So we'll talk about what is EJB and what is JPA and what is a database and why do we need them and what is a dependency injection. And also we'll talk about the WebLogic server. So in the entire course, we're going to combine all of them together and we'll talk about creating a, a simple applications. And we need to know one another thing. So we should understand what are the different types of beans available in EJB, right? There are uh, three major types. The first one is a session bean. And second one is entity bean. And the third one, a message driven bean. Most probably we are not going to use the entity bean because it is pretty much core concept in EJB 2.0, but we are not going to use 2.0 because we're going to use Java 3.0. So what is the purpose of session bean? 
So in a simple words, session beans contains the data for a particular a session because from the name itself you can understand the bean is for a session. So it can be a stateful or it can be stateless as well. And another important thing, the beans will be get destroyed as soon as the session ended or as soon as the session are terminated. We'll talk about what is a stateless and what is stateful later and before we move on to the next one which is a entity bean so what is a entity bean so entity bean basically represents the the persistence data storage which means how we can communicate to the database and how the entities is going to help us to achieve the database activity via the entity bean and not only that we can use the entity bean to retrieve the data from the databases which means the get operation or you can call them as a fetching operation and the next important thing so message driven beans this is the most advanced concept and most important as well so message driven beans basically used for a jms context so where someone posting some messages so who's going to consume the message so consuming and broadcasting so there will be a place in the server where we configure a jms context or there will be a queue which is configured in the jms so the queue will keep on listening to a particular port so whenever there is a message posted it consumes the message and it broadcast some functionality so that is a major purpose of the message driven bean hello everyone welcome back so we need to understand what is the advantage of using the ejps so it's a simple implementation of a large end to end application as i mentioned in the uh, beginning this ejps is going to used for creating a large enterprise level application that is why this particular terminology called as enterprise java bean and not only that there is some other advantages as well so when we are using the ejp the container provides most of the system level services so like how to handle the transaction and how to handle the loggings and how to load balancing because when you serve multiple a request at the same time how it can be balancing the request based on the demand and how the persistence is working and how we can write a exception handling so in normal scenario we have to write a separate code for each and everything but in ejp we can use annotations to handle these things so as a developer all we need to do is just focus on the implementation of your business logic and not only that the ejp containers they will manage the life cycle of your instances or your objects so developer need not to worry about when to create or when to delete the objects and next thing how we are going to create a project so we as i mentioned earlier we are going to use eclipse and we are going to create a project using maven so we don't have to mapping the jars manually and then we are going to configure a application server and then we will create an ejp so the way how we going to proceed from here let's create an application server the reason why i am starting with the application server because those application server we need to provide when we creating a ejp project so let's create a server and then we'll create a project and then we'll map the server into the project so whenever i try to deploy i can directly use our eclipse to deploy your ejp application into our weblogic server so in the next video we're going to talk about how we can configure an application server which is a web logic